start recording. Hello and welcome to this podcast from the Culture, Society and Security team at ITSS Verona. Uh, my name is Lee Dawson and together with Julia Hodgins and Sofia Staderini, uh, we'll explore an unprecedented movement in the global stock market. New generations of retail investors are setting in motion a social movement that changes the way company shares are held and voted and drives corporate environmental responsibility. So new research by Dr. Sergio Alberto Gramito Ricci from Monash University and Professor Christina Sota from Louisiana State University shows that groups of millennial and Generation Z or Gen Z retail investors, whom they dub wireless investors, are driving a social movement with disruptive effects on corporate governance. Now, wireless investors have been taking aim at Wall Street, hedge funds, and the global financial hierarchy by bringing gaming-like dynamics uh, to their trading. So they use social media apps and online forums like Reddit subreddits like Wall Street Bets and, and um, AMC stock to coordinate their actions in a gaming-like fashion and obtain unprecedented results. Now, such actions possibly drove the 3,000% surge in US GameStop shares in January 2021. In that month, hedge funds and other short sellers lost almost $20 billion in GameStop, a watershed moment for these wireless investors. So what does this mean for global business in dealing with unpre unpredictable online movements that can impact the global stock market? We'll ask these questions of Dr. Ricci and, and Professor Sorta as well. So first and foremost, explain the premise of your research, which is due to be published soon in the Nevada Law Journal. What are wireless investors and how are they disrupting the global financial environment? Thank you for having us here. Um, I think you, you already said a few words of, about wireless investors actually. Um, in Corporate Governance uh, Gaming, our um, article forthcoming uh, in the uh, Nevada Law Journal, um, Christina and I discuss uh, how new generations of um, investors whom we dub wireless investors, as you said, um, are able to transform corporate governance and the corporate sector in a very unprecedented fashion. Wireless investors use the technological infrastructure, um, for example, trading apps and new ways of communication such as social media, online platforms, and in general online communication to overcome some of the typical obstacles that prevent retail investors from effectively engaging with uh, corporate governance. Just to name some of these obstacles, we can mm, think about rational apathy, collective action problems, and free riding. So what we are witnessing is a very new uh, phenomenon, both from a finance point of view and from a corporate governance point of view. Terrific. Nina and Sergio both. Millennials and Gen Z are educated by boomers. Let's say they learn the rules of the game of investment and corporate governance. Now they empowered by technology are breaking social norms of capitalism. Trading without intermediaries using their voting power leveraging from their shares and pushing the envelope in new perspectives in governance. This has unfolded into a revolution and some wonder if it responds to a basic gaming impulse that's having a, a strong ripple effect or does it have a moral or a social agenda plan operation? Do we know what was the intention of the wireless investors in Reddit? So as an initial matter, we should make clear that Wall Street Bets was not founded uh, with the intention of trying to upend Wall Street. 
by all accounts, the founder of Wall Street Bets, uh, Jamie Roganzinski, who, by the way, isn't even involved in the subreddit anymore, founded the subreddit as a way of trying to share high-risk trading information. Um, because there really weren't any other forums to share that type of information at the time uh, Wall Street Bets was founded. So for purposes of this paper, we didn't dive into the, the how, the when, or the why Wall Street Bets transformed, but it seems to have happened really organically over time. Um, like likely a natural extension of the types of information that was being shared, the trades that are being done, uh, and the people who were attracted to the subreddit. As far as GameStop goes, and really using GameStop as the, the big event that has propelled this movement, one of the very first proponents of GameStop appears to have been uh, Keith Gill, who went by the username Deep Effing Value or DVF on Wall Street Bets. He first invested in GameStop back around June of 2019. And he did so not to upend Wall Street, uh, but really because he was very confident in the future of the company. He thought it was undervalued. He thought it had potential. And he was apparently laughed at when he first started posting his investments um, in GameStop on Wall Street Bets and in the Wall Street Bets forum. And he also has a YouTube channel as well. And he mentioned um, on there that the stock had been heavily shorted. At some point, people began kind of buying into what he was saying. Um, and so <clears throat> it kind of really, I think, evolved over time with the investments in GameStop. Um, what we were also seeing is last August 2020, Ryan Cohen, the founder of uh, the very successful online pet store, Chewy, invested in GameStop. That pushed more people to invest as well. Um, and then a few weeks later in September of 2020, another Wall Street Bets user uh, who went by the username player, this is not player 896, I believe, he posted in Wall Street Bets uh, <clears throat> a kind of a comprehensive analysis of GameStop and how much potential GameStop had and how heavily shorted GameStop was and the potential for a short squeeze. The title of this person's post was uh, bankrupting institutional investors for dummies featuring GameStop. So there appears to have been this idea that developed or grew over time to kind of stick it to Wall Street, uh, particularly to hedge funds that were shorting stocks. So I think it was partly playing on, on gaming instincts that these people just brought, naturally had and brought to the subreddit and also partly playing on this idea that they, they wanted to get retribution for injustices that they saw playing out on, in Wall Street. So uh, you say that probably the motivations of this uh, operation has been uh, sort of a, a social justice call. Let's say that was organically brewing. Are we to expect more trends like this from this same group? I, I mean, I think so, yeah. So millennials and Gen Z, um, they are, of course, really the driving force here, as, as Sergio had mentioned. Um, they were really negatively affected by the Great Recession. Um, they blame the Great Recession on Wall Street and on boomers. Um, boomers are the ones who've been driving Wall Street and running Wall Street for all these years. And we're already seeing this a similar phenomenon play out right now with AMC. Uh, retail investors have been pouring into AMC since at least January of this year, if not before. Uh, the stock is now over 80% owned by retail investors. Um, this past Friday, June 25th, the stock closed at just over $54 a share, whereas in the beginning of, of May, May 6th, it closed at $9 a share. And so we're seeing also in various online venues, uh, the AMC stock subreddit, discourse, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and investors saying that they're holding AMC stock. They're not selling because they want to get revenge on Wall Street, particularly hedge funds. Um, and they're saying that they like the stock and they like the company. They have confidence in, in the company. So it seems to be a test of wills right now uh, between retail investors uh, and those that have shorted AMC stock. Okay, so uh, Professor Soter and Dr. and Dr. Ricci, in your research, you state that millennials will inherit up to 68 trillion over the next two decades, and more than one third of millennials say they do not trust financial institutions. 
They also blame boomers for a variety of social and environmental problems, including climate change and the Great Recession of 2008. What do you say about the way shares and finance are both traded and sold and the character of shareholders? Well, it's, it's completely transformational. Um, millennials and Gen Z would much rather invest directly rather than uh, rely on brokers. Uh, they aren't going through traditional means to obtain information regarding investing. Um, they're more apt to turn to online venues like Reddit, Twitter, Discourse, YouTube, Clubhouse, TikTok, the list goes on and on. So I think that if um, brokers want to maintain a clientele, they're going to have to change the way they're communicating to these groups. We're also seeing wireless investors invest in companies that they know, uh, products and services that they use, uh, companies that they're familiar with. So they're putting their, their money where their mouth is, so to speak. I think it also means that they, if they don't like a certain company, they aren't as apt to invest in that particular company, or if they invest, they're going to be doing so uh, with the purposes of, of making changes, with that goal of making changes. And with the amount of money millennials are going to have, companies are going to have to listen. Um, as I just previously touched on, um, we're also seeing them investing in companies like GameStop and AMC with a two-tier goal of making money and trying to get revenge on Wall Street. So with AMC, there's been a lot of talk about the amount of potential illegal naked short selling that's been allegedly occurring. I think that it's possible we're gonna see more SEC oversight in this area because of pushing from retail investors, from wireless investors. And so wireless investors really have the ability to transform, com transform companies, to transform markets, um, and to transform securities legislation on, on all levels. So why are these groups essentially pushing for, you know, corporate social governance and other environmental and ethical agendas? So do you think businesses will react to these sudden changes as well? Well, studies and surveys tell us that millennials and Gen Z place a very high significance on social, environmental, ethical values. Uh, they value these more than previous generations did at the same age. Surveys also tell us that millennials are willing to give up a little bit of profit um, if they think a company has a positive sustainability element. And they also believe that companies that support social causes are more likely to perform better um, and have a, long, uh, a better long-term financial success. So that being said, we haven't yet seen wireless investors specifically voting at shareholder meetings for ESG initiatives. That's something that Sergio and I believe is going to occur. Um, but we're really just at the beginning of the, of the wireless investors movement. Uh, we're just at the beginning of seeing them uh, invest directly um, and getting significant amounts of shares in, in companies like AMC. And what we have definitely already seen though, are index funds voting for ESG initiatives as a way of attracting millennial investors. And so that tells us that they think that millennials will vote ESG. Um, businesses are also already reacting. The ESG initiatives um, aren't, haven't just suddenly kind of popped up out of nowhere. Um, but what's different now though, is the power of the retail investor and um, their ability to take collective action. Um, the, other really significant difference that we're seeing is that these retail investors gather online um, and then how they communicate. And so business, businesses, particularly CEOs and management, um, they have to change how they communicate with retail investors. Um, and they need to use the same venues that these wireless investors are using. So we're seeing the CEO of AMC do this pretty effectively. He started tweeting again. He's regularly using tweets uh, to treat directly to retail investors um, who like, them call, like to call themselves apes. Um, he's also given interviews to a YouTuber, uh, Trey Collins, who goes by Trey Trades. Uh, seems to be in pretty regular communication with him as a way of um, communicating with the, the ape nation. Um, there's also businesses need to not only be communicating about spe uh, specific business initiatives that they have, um, but they also need to engage in a bit more education about business fundamentals and about what votes mean. And we're seeing Adam Aaron do this 
uh, pretty effectively with respect to the upcoming AMC shareholders meeting. Um, just relatedly, I recently also started a TikTok called Biz Law Prop to educate retail investors about the basics of, of business law um, because I've seen so many different posts where people were confusing or misunderstanding kind of fundamental issues and fundamental concepts of business law. So I think it's a part education, um, not just about businesses, but about the markets and about business law. Thank you. To both of you, the cyberspace provides ground for unthinkable social processes to come to fruition as we're seeing. Simultaneously, it opens the door to many threats of diverse size and capabilities. And this has been a tectonic shift, right? It poses survival challenges to long time underpinned financial patterns. In the middle of this are the small investors and the citizens fund managed by the now old school actors in the financial market. What are the largest threats to this type of operation? We can see this as a phase in evolution. And uh, it is actually a very, very important moment in history for finance and corporate governance. And it's probably a process that would follow the typical evolution dynamics. However, we should, the, the only concerns we might have um, are concerns related to possible manipulation of the dynamics. So we can probably um, observe the evolution and how these uh, uh, unfold, uh, but we have to be very careful uh, and place a lot of emphasis and a lot of attention um, on the risks related uh, to forms of manipulation of the evolutionary process. Uh, thank you. One more question. So uh, beyond the pandemic emergency, 2020 and 2021 were marked by a number of social movements, such as those of Black Lives Matter and the protest uh, of Black Friday against Amazon. What similar similarities and difference can we draw with the potential wireless investor movements? Can we say that the uniqueness of this movement goes beyond its digi digital playing field? So I think there's a common element here to all these different social movements, um, and that's an element of equity. Millennials and Gen Zers are particularly focused on equity on a variety of different, different levels. Uh, there's... So these different social movements are, are, are more similar, I think, than they really are different. Of course, on their faces, they're fighting for different things, different end goals. But the bottom line really seems to be equity, whether it's financial equity, gender equity, racial equity, equity in taxes, making corporations pay their fair share of taxes, equity in working conditions, equity in climate change, according to one study, uh, just a hundred companies are responsible for 71% of global emissions. So millennials and Gen Zers are seeing these injustices and I think they're fed up and they're intent on doing something about it. A common thread among these different social movements is also how they're taking root, how they're spreading and, and, and how they're diffusing online on social media and, and how the leadership tends to be very decentralized. So again, using AMC as an example um, and mentioning those popular uh, YouTubers, um, a few of them have been invited to appear on, on mass media news channels. They've been referenced in news articles. And when these people are called the, the leaders of the AMC eight nation, they reject that regularly. And they say, no, we're just apes like everyone else. And um, so they're seeing this idea of equity even playing out there with no formal leaders. Um, and then one more point, what's interesting about, I think some of these online venues, particularly with Reddit, is that everyone can be equal. So with Reddit, unless you're disclosing this information, unless you're using some sort of um, an, an identifier, you don't know someone's gender, you don't know their age, you don't know their race, you don't know how much money they make. And, unless of course some of them are posting trades 
um, but they don't have to be doing that. So it's a unique characteristic, I think, of these different social media forums. It's a leveler. And I think it helps to bring people together and to bond even more. And, and it helps that, that collective action. Thank you very much. And one final question about the consequence. So a wireless investor intention and action appear to behave as the invisible hand of the 21st century, showing the opportunities, but also the limits of free market. So what change in corporate governance can we expect if the, act if the action of new generation of retail investor continue to have the same magnitude as the saga that began in January? Well, I think that what we have seen so far does not represent the complete picture of uh, wireless investors' potential. Um, wireless investors can lead a movement that places uh, the human, human beings, and I would say even the average citizen, at the center of the corporate, corporate governance mechanics. So that represents a very significant paradigm shift in uh, the corporate sector. Thank you very much. Yeah, look, no, that includes our, our interview for, for this evening. Um, look, and we hope to have shone a spotlight uh, in, in this discussion on this significant development uh, in the global economy as we see it at, at the present time. Um, now be sure to visit ITSS Verona for more information and to visit our YouTube uh, page uh, for more in-depth discussion. Um, and on behalf of the of our team, we'd love to, to thank um, Dr. Sergio Alberto Gramito Ricci from Monash University um, and Professor Christina Sorsa from uh, Louisiana State University for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you.